How's it going, everybody? Ragroth here. So, with a new Bleach game, um, of course, I got to do my typical top 10 characters. I'd like character lists, which is something I never really thought I'd be saying with a new Bleach game. So, it's crazy to think how far we've come <laughs> with this series and actually getting a new fighting game. So, you know, of course, due to the nature of the game, we're really only focusing on kind of the uh, up into, I guess, the Arankar arc. I'm really only going to be including characters from those arcs. As much as I would love to have characters from the Thousand Year Blood War arc and even the Fullbring arc, um, we're going to just focus on that, make it a little easier. However, though, I did make a separate list for Thousand Year Blood War and I believe Fullbring arc characters. So maybe down the line, depending on how things are going, maybe I'll pull that list out as well. But yeah, you know, before I get started, of course, you guys know the drill. Like the video if you like it. Dislike if you dislike it. Definitely subscribe if you like this video and some of my others. It would really help the channel out a lot, especially since I'm almost to 1,000 subscribers. So let's get this list started. Number 10. I'm afraid that's not true. There are some. Both Renji and Momo know its power. But that's neither here nor there. Now I plan on telling you, too. Raise your head, Wabiske. How dare you? So first up is Izuru Kira. Um, I don't really have too much to say here. Um, Kira is just sort of one of, I guess, the lieutenants or vice captains that I always kind of liked. Uh, I just seemed like kind of a cool character, kind of like a you know very like chill, nice guy as well. <laughs> but um, I've always really liked his Shikai. I don't know, just something about it's really cool, and I like its ability. I, it's always been really used cool in the games he's been playable, and not that he's been playable in too many. Though that is one problem with him. I feel like in a game we're kind of awakening. All that is sort of a big deal, like. He's never shown as Bankai, so his awakening might be a little bit on the boring side. But there are some characters that aren't going to have their Bankai in this game, like Rukia, so I'm sure they'll work something out for him. I could see him being a character that will kind of slow characters down, kind of debuff them in a sense. Something like that. I don't think we've seen anything like that in the game so far. Kind of with his, because um, I know his uh, Zanpakuto can make like uh, make things heavier the, the, more, the more he kind of slashes at them, essentially. Now, for his chances... I really don't know. Um, I think it really depends on kind of the scale of, you know, the amount of characters that are going to be in this game. He hasn't had too many major fights that I can recall. So I don't know if that helps his chances either. I feel like he's one of those characters. It's just sort of 50 50 and it just depends on how many characters are going to be in the game. Um, if they are doing DLC and let's just say the DLC isn't going to be like Thousand Year Blood War and full bring arc focus. They're just still just focusing on the arcs that are represented in the base game. Then I think he would have a 100% chance of being DLC, but we still have to get more information on that. Number nine. So this is probably going to be the most obscure character on this list, Dark Rukia. Dark Rukia is from one of the Bleach movies called Fade to Black. Um, she was playable in, I believe, the last Heat the Soul game. Um, but I just think she's really cool. I mean, give any character a scythe and I'm all for it. Um, and I mean, there are a couple other movie characters I would have liked that I think I almost put on this list, but she's probably my favorite one. Now, in terms of how she would play, I mean, I think she'd be pretty unique. No one really quite has a... Well, I guess there are a couple, maybe one or two characters that have a weapon like that. Um, I think she'd kind of fit under any of the molds of, of Soul Reaper, Quincy, or Arankar. She was kind of just her own thing. But I'll be honest, I don't think she has a chance in hell in this game. Maybe, maybe as DLC or maybe a sequel down the line. But again, Dark Rookie was put in a game when we didn't even get to the full bring arc yet. So, let alone the Thousand Year Blood War. So she's going to be even lower of a priority now, unfortunately. Aside, you know, we, we also know they're not canon, of course. You know, again, if it's, if it's a case where, like, this game is only focusing on these arcs even as with dlc then i think maybe she has a shot but this is kind of a, the most pipe dream character i have on my list number eight all waves rise now and become my shield lightning strike now and become my blade Now, Ukitake has actually always been one of my favorite captains. I know he's not exactly the most popular one, and he unfortunately never really got that much screen time, which is still really a shame to this day. But I've always just liked the guy. I don't know. He's just cool. I, I like I liked his kind of 
personality. Um, but I also really like his Zanpak toe. I love like dual wielding and you know, I, he's one of the few characters that has a dual wielding Zanpak toe. He's been playable in some games and he's one of those characters where I think they actually make up a lot of stuff for him. And I've actually always liked it. They gave him a lot of like kind of water and kind of electric techniques like, you know, with keto and all that. I think it maybe has something to do with the fact that his um, his Zanpak toe, his sheet guy, is kind of tied to kind of fish and water and all that. They even actually showed, gave him a Bankai in Bleach Brave Souls, where he kind of has like these, um, uh, what do you call those things? Those like prayer tags or something kind of going and kind of connecting his swords. And like he ha makes all these kind of like ink based fishes and stuff like that. That was really cool. Obviously, that's definitely not going to be in this game, you know, because it's let alone not even the thousand year blood war arc, you know, it was made up for Bleach Brave Souls. But I think Kubo does actually help collaborate with those. But I've always, I've always liked how he played in the games, even if they kind of had to pull stuff out of their ass a bit. But we do know that a ma major feature of his Shikai or Zanpak Toe is being able to absorb attacks. So he could be a very counter based character, which we've only seen a little bit of that with like, you know, one of Byakuya's like special moves. So, yeah, I think he could be a really cool and interesting character. Now for his chances, you know, because he hasn't fought that much, it's it is really hard to say with him. He is definitely, unfortunately, one of the lesser likely captains to be in the game, I would say. Again, just like Izuru, it just depends on, I think, the scale of the roster. If this is only covering those arcs, even for DLC, he is 100% going to be DLC. There's no, there's no way about that. It just depends on what they're going to cover and all that. Um, I think he has a chance, just not a super strong chance. Number seven. Ut. So now for number seven, we have my we have our first Espada, Halabel or Parabel. Uh, she's always been one of my favorites, probably one of my favorite girls in Bleach. Um, I just think she's really cool. Um, I, I really like her abilities with like the water and the sharks. And she is one of the strongest Espada as well. And she even survived until or she survived, you know, throughout the whole series as well. I mean, barely, barely she survived. But in terms of how she could play, I mean, it's hard to say if she'd be a more... Um, a more long range or close range character. I think she'd probably be kind of mid range if anything, maybe like Biakuya or something. Now, one thing I do have to say with the Espada, at least a lot of them, and this might be a hot take. I actually would kind of rather some of them just have their awakened forms and not their first forms, because honestly, most of their first forms, they don't, most of them don't really do anything that interesting. And Halibel, I don't really think from what I remember, she really did anything that interesting or distinct to her, because most of the Soul Reaper characters their kind of base form is their Shikai, which already kind of is a lot more unique and isn't usually just a basic katana or anything like that. You know, characters with like whip swords or characters with like they shoot flower petals, you know, or, you know, they do um, they use like ice techniques, things like that. But a lot of the Espada, like in their first form, sure, they're powerful and all, but they don't really do anything that unique. They shoot some Saros that are maybe shot a little differently. Maybe they do some fast sword attacks, but a lot of them don't really do anything that distinct. Halibel, I think, is one of the ones that I really think should maybe just be in her awakened state, her resurrection from the start. Admittedly, her design in her first form is cool. I do like it, but just from a moveset standpoint, and, you know, it doesn't help that this game to transform, you basically have to be, it's a comeback mechanic for the most part. So it's like you might not even get to transform into their cooler, more interesting resurrection states. And I hate to kind of have their more interesting movesets locked behind a comeback mechanic. Now, there are some Espada that I think should start in their first form, and I'm going to get to those. But Hyrabel, eh, I, I kind of would maybe prefer if she just, just was in her, her resurrection. I don't know what her awakening would be. I guess that's the only problem, but I don't know. Um, Now, for her chances, I think she's, I think she's pretty likely. I think she's... Uh, pretty safe. You know, she had some major fights. She has some distinct abilities. And she's, again, one of the kind of strong Espada. So I, I think I think she's pretty safe to say in that she's going to be in the game. Number six. So another Espada, and it's the Espada right above ha Haribel, and that is none other than Baragon, um, or Baragon. 
I don't know how to pronounce. I don't know how to properly pronounce these names. Some of them are really hard to say. Um, he's one of my favorite Espada, probably one of my favorite villains in Bleach. I mean, his Resurrection is maybe one of the coolest designs in the whole anime. And I know, yeah, even though for being the number two Espada, maybe he kind of went out a little. Basically, I still think his ability is super frightening. And if anything, the the good guys just kind of got a bit lucky. But he was always like super fun to play as in Bleach Soul Resurrection. Now for him, I do see him as another kind of maybe mid range kind of. Uh, far range character i think definitely kind of a slower character that kind of covers a lot of space with his you know axe and his um respera was it was that what it was, was called now again with halibel i absolutely think he does not need his first form his first form in my opinion really isn't that cool um it is a little more unique because at least he uses a different weapon than just a katana but i mean i think we're really here for his, his resurrection we're not here for the first form like just give us that barrigan i don't think we need the first form and his chance is basically the same as ha Halibel. I think he's pretty much a lock for the most part. He had a major fight or two. And again, he's one of the strongest Espada, one of the penultimate characters in the Iran car arc. Number five. Kick about. Los Lobos. Cotton Kyokotsu. So this one should also be no surprise. Again, it's the next up a spot of the number one a spot of Coyote Stark. Um, Stark is just really cool and really unique in terms of abilities for Bleach. Now, again, once again, I do not think we need his first form. I think most of us just care about the second form. He didn't really do anything that interesting in the first form. And I think, you know, assuming he's a big gun wielder, I think he could be, you know, another big zoner character, kind of like Ishida. He would be sort of the bad guy or a spot hollow equivalent to Ishida. Now here is something I would like to see with Stark that I don't really actually have seen done in many games. Now we know he has the guns that shoot the Saros. However though, there was a part in his fight with Shunsei that he kind of turned his guns into like these energy katanas, which I thought was really cool. Um, however, I guess this sort of goes against sort of how he would play because he's, you know, he's mainly known for using guns being kind of a long range attack and this i guess would long range attacker this would maybe go against it either maybe some of his you know his his kind of major primary moves would maybe be with the guns and then maybe he'd have some cup you know some secondary moves with the swords or and i don't know about this perhaps he could start in his his resurrection with the guns and then he his awakening he he, he switches to the swords he would be kind of like the reverse of biakria where in his base form, he's okay at close range, and then his awakening makes him better, you know, at far range and worse in close range. Stark's awakening would make him worse at far range, but better in close range. I think that would be cool and make it so, like, there's a reason why he just starts in his resurrection. And yes, yeah, Stark's chances, again, same with same with Halibel and Paragon. He, I think he's a lock. You know, he, I feel like you can't not have him and have the, the Aron Kar Huecamundo arc. Number four. Soroso, Watashi no reyats ni taerare na natte kita koro ka. So now for this one, it's a very specific form of Aizen that I would like. My favorite form of Aizen is probably his, I guess it's his um, third form. It's right after he kind of uh, bursts, he kind of uh, awakens from the, the chrysalis form where he kind of has like the long hair, the open trench coat, like, you know, or as, or as some of us call it, <laughs> mullet Aizen. Um, I, I think that's my favorite form of him. And it was the version of him that was playable in Bleach Soul Resurrection. Now, admittedly, with this form, he actually didn't really fight that much. He kind of just screwed around and kind of just indirectly killed some innocent civilians that had just a low enough spirit, spiritual pressure. However, I feel like with, with what Bleach Soul Resurrection did, this could still be kind of uh, show a lot of Aizen's moves that he's done within this form and also out of this form. Because I just don't know if they're going to have, they're, it's possible to have all of Aizen's forms. And I actually think maybe Aizen is a character that might be separated into different forms. Like there might be a Soul Society slash kind of earlier parts of Hueco Mundo Aizen. Or no, maybe there would be a Soul Society Aizen 
then Hueco Mundo one that at least turns into like that at least turns into this form and then maybe the ultimate turns into the monster. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it could be done, but this is my favorite form of Aizen, you know, and obviously we know Aizen's going to be in the game. It's just a matter of what forms he's going to have. And I just feel like we got robbed of this form in uh, J-Star's Victory Versus where his where Aizen's ultimate was just kind of basically absorbing the Ho Hogyoku and transforming, but not actually transforming. Obviously in Jump Force, this was the Aizen in the Thousand Year Blood War arc that never really transformed. So I'm not mad at that one not transforming, but that one in J-Stars was ridiculous how that didn't transform. So yeah, obviously Aizen's a, a more than a lock. We just don't know what forms he's going to have. Number three. Reek Kazashini. I see. So that is your Zanpakuto, is it? Shuhei Hisagi. So now Hisagi is probably my favorite Soul Reaper character. Um, I've just always thought this guy was really cool, um, just in terms of his design, his personality. Um, even before his Shikai was revealed, I did kind of like how he played in the games, like the movesets they made up for him. But his Shikai is easily one of my favorite in the series. His Bankai is cool as well, but we definitely know we're not getting that in this game. So that alone makes me want him a lot. Um, it doesn't help that we've actually never really been able to properly use his Shikai in a non-mobile game, because I remember, I think he was playable in the last Heat the Soul game, but his Shikai was only his ultimate move. He couldn't, you, he couldn't actually just use it out of, like, just regularly. And I would like to say maybe this game would actually give that to us. Um, also, fun fact, me and him share a birthday, August 14th. So that's another bonus there, not that it's a big contributing factor. Um, something I also do want to say with him is... I feel like he he was a character that had a very similar hairstyle to Ichigo in the earlier arcs. And later on in like the Thousand Year Blood War arc, they kind of made his hairstyle a little bit more different from Ichigo. Now, I actually wonder if that was to kind of make him look a bit more different or if that was just to kind of give him a new style kind of over time. I do like the later hairstyle more. And I actually do wonder if maybe he just had that early hairstyle because... You know, I do notice that's a trend in a lot of anime where it's like if there's a lot of characters, there might be some characters that will have like the exact same hairstyle as the main character, probably because it's the hairstyle that the creator is the most comfortable drawing. Now, obviously, it would be cool if he kind of got that later hairstyle, at least as an alternate. Um, but obviously, I'm not going to complain if, you know, he has the default more Ichigo like hairstyle. Now, for his chances, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say with him. He's been playable in games, but I feel like the smaller roster games, he's usually... um a low priority. I mean, he's had some fights, you know, he fought against like, I mean, he fought against like Kenpachi and Yumachika. That didn't really do, that didn't really show much though. Um, he did fight against an Aron card named Findor. I think that's his name, Findor. But I really don't think Findor is going to be playable. So it's like, you know, how are you going to give him that fight? Um, now his most major fight that could be represented is when him and Komamura fought like Holified Tozen. That could happen. But again, that fight could just be represented with Komamura fighting him and not Hisagi, even though Hisagi, I think, did land the fatal, the final blow, if I remember correctly. Well, not counting when Aizen made Tozen explode. <laughs> but yeah, his chances are really hard to say. I think if it's, I think it's going to be more than 20 characters, I think he has a shot. I think he definitely has a shot. It's just, it just depends on the scale of the roster. And once again, if the game is getting DLC, but it's locked to these arcs, he is 100% going to be in the game. But I really hope he is because he's one of my favorite characters in the series. And I'd really like to have him in a game where he could just properly use his Shikai that, that is in a mobile game. Number two. The spiritual pressure. Is he in a wrong card too? Which one of you is the strongest? Who's gonna take me on? Retreat! Ichigo, get out of here! Run! <laughs> I figured it probably wasn't you. No surprise. Now, number two is another one of my favorite all-time characters in the series. Probably one of my favorite anime characters ever, and that is none other than Grim Jow. Um, I mean, I don't really know what more to say with him. He's definitely one of the most... In one of the most iconic and major Bleach characters that's in a lot of games ever since he, you know, debuted. Um, now, I will say with Grim Jow, I think he is one of the few Espada that should be playable, have their first form playable. 
That's because I feel like, well, not only is his first form very iconic and one of the first Espada we see, well, it, you know, it does look drastically different from his second form. Not that, you know, there are other ones that obviously look drastically different too that I've kind of contracted myself on. But I feel like Grim Jal has shown enough unique things that he's done in his first form that kind of separates him from his Resurrection. Because he uses his, he actually uses his hands more than like most of the other Espada, than most of the other Bleach characters, honestly. He fights, if anything, more like a Dragon Ball Z character rather than a Bleach character. So that alone makes him very unique. And I think that justifies him having that form uh, and not just the, the Resurrection. And I do love his Resurrection. God, do I love Pantera, my Super Saiyan 3 cat guy. But I'm okay if, if the first form is his base form, and then his awakening is the resurrection. That this is one of the few instances where I'm okay with it. But yeah, I don't, do we have to even debate Grim Jow's chances? Like, you have to have him. If, if it's if it's a game covering the Arankar arc, you have to absolutely have him. There's no way you can. He's probably, Ichigo has a lot of Vegeta-like characters, but I think Grim Jow is arguably the most Vegeta of those characters. So yeah, no debate, he's going to be in the game, and I'm really looking forward to when he gets revealed. Honorable Mansions. So, of course, you know, got to give a few honorable mentions. Nothing crazy. Uh, they are Rose or Rohada or Rosado, Neutra, Nell, and Muramasa. Number one. Shira no nara oshiete yaru. Kore ga shin no zetsubou no sugata. You may have heard me say before why I'm not, you may have heard me say, you know, that I'm not too upset that the game doesn't go to the Thousand Year Blood War arc. This is probably the major reason right here. You know what the one thing the Thousand Year Blood War arc has, or you know what the one thing the Thousand Year Blood War arc doesn't have? Okuyara. This guy is not only my favorite Bleach character, but probably one of my favorite anime antagonists ever. I don't really know what more to say. He's easily one of my, he's easily my favorite Bleach character, and he is absent in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. A couple of these Espada are as well, like Stark and Bar Baragon as well. So being able to have Olquiar in a game almost makes me forget that we're not going to have the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Now, in terms of how he could work, this is tricky. Uh, I would honestly be fine and maybe prefer if his base form was just his first Resurrection and then his second and then his awakening was Segundo Tapa. Um, or I'd also be fine if he just started in Segundo Tapa. Honestly, I would be OK if he started as his base form. I think he's done a lot of distinct things as well. I mean, he's he's had one of the most fights in his first form than, you know, some of the others. I mean, him and Grim Jell are probably the two prime Espada characters. And again, he sort of fights more like a Dragon Ball character in some ways than like, you know, a lot of Bleach characters. So there is at least stuff to work with there. But I really like his later forms more. I know a lot of people don't really talk much about his first Resurrection. Obviously, it's not as good as the second one, but I still like it. And I, you know, I would like to see it represented. He could actually be one of the few characters that maybe has two awakenings because it seems like Ichigo could have two awakenings with he has Bankai and then Bankai with the visor mask. Okuyara could very well be that too. I'm not sure, but he absolutely needs to have Segundo top. Absolutely. In terms of how he could play, eh, it's kind of hard to say with him. He, I, I guess, I guess he'd be kind of an all-rounder character. I mean, he's done close range moves. He's done far range moves. I do associate him more with like kind of energy moves like Saros and like the um, Lanza del Rapanza or something. The the javelin move where it makes the big the big explosion. And obviously, in terms of his chances, I, I don't, again, I don't really think we got to worry about him. If you're going to have the Waco, the Waco Mundo arc, you have to have Okuyara. He's a requirement. He has very major fights against Ichigo. No debate there. He's, he's going to be in the game, and I cannot wait until he's revealed. I'm really curious how he's going to play. But that about does it for this video. I wanted to try to kind of get this done before we kind of see more character reveals before, I guess, this list kind of ages too, 
age is too bad. Let, let me know what characters you're looking forward to in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, and it can be characters from any arc. So it doesn't have to be from just the Soul Society or Arankar arc. It's, it's fine. You, you can go wild in the comments. It's fine. But of course, like the video if you like it. Dislike if you dislike it. Definitely consider subscribing if you like this video and some of my others. It would really help the channel out a lot, since, especially since I'm almost 2,000 subscribers. But thank you so much for checking out this video. I'm looking forward to more Bleach Rebirth of Souls news and speculation. And as I always say, I know the time, I know the place. Keep being awesome.